Good afternoon and welcome to the Cathedral Basilica of St. James. Today we celebrate Our Lady of Sorrows. The opening hymn is number 895, Sing We of the Blessed Mother, number 895, verse 2. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you. Good afternoon. Yesterday we celebrate the memorial of Our Lady of Sorrows. There's always been a devotion and veneration of the Blessed Virgin Mary, and her sorrowful episodes in her life has been you know, recalled and prayed over in many different places. And eventually, the number of those sorrows became seven, and the devotion became spread out throughout the Universal Church. And so today, we commemorate Our Lady of Sorrows and the witness that she bears for all of us. Today, we also would like to commend Our Lady of Sorrows Parish in Corona, where Father Manuel de Jesus Rodriguez is the pastor. And so we pray that they have a very fruitful ministry. I know they have a very large ministry, especially to the Spanish-speaking community. And we pray that their ministry would be fruitful to salvation. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, who willed that when your son was lifted high on the cross, his mother should stand close by and share his suffering, grant that your church, participating with the Virgin Mary in the passion of Christ, may merit a share in his resurrection who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. I am reminding you, brothers and sisters, of the gospel I preached to you, which you indeed received and in which you also stand. Through it, you are also being saved, if you hold fast to the word I preached to you, 
unless you believed in vain. For I handed on to you as of first importance what I also received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures, that he was buried, that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures, that he appeared to Cephas, then to the twelve. After that, he appeared to more than 500 brothers at once, most of whom are still living, though some have fallen asleep. After that, he appeared to James, then to all the apostles. Last of all, as to one born abnormally, he appeared to me. For I am the least of the apostles, not fit to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am, and this grace to me has not been ineffective. Indeed, I have toiled harder than all of them, not I, however, but the grace of God that is with me. Therefore, whether it be I or they, so we preach, and so you believed. The word of the Lord. of my enemies and my persecutors. Save me, O Lord, in your steadfast love. How 
the martyr's crown beneath the cross of the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 The Lord be with you. Reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. Glory to you. Jesus' father and mother were amazed at what was said about him. And Simeon blessed them and said to Mary, his mother, Behold, this child is destined for the fall and rise of many in Israel and to be a sign that will be contradicted. And you yourself, a sword will pierce so that the thoughts of many hearts may be revealed. The Gospel of the Lord. At the cross, her station keeping, stood the mournful mother weeping close to Jesus at the last. Through her heart, his sorrow sharing, all his bitter anguish bearing, now at length the sword has passed. Considering the life of Mary, how could she not be sorrowful? But was she always sorrowful? If it was only that she was terribly sad, where would the gospel be in all of that? Here are the traditional seven sorrows of the mother of God. The prophecy of Simeon, which we just heard, the flight into Egypt, the loss of Jesus for three days, meeting Jesus on the way to Calvary, the crucifixion and death of Jesus, Jesus taken from the cross, and Jesus laid in the tomb. The first sorrow, involves the piercing of Mary's soul by a sword. Imagine, and you can use the baptismal font here as, as a you know, guide, all manner of strange events have been part of your first child's birth. And right after his baptism, right here, some random man comes into the church, picks him up, and starts saying, Thank God, I can die in peace now because I have seen the Messiah of Israel and the Savior of the world. And then he blesses you and your husband saying, because of the child, 
many people are going to rise and fall. People are going to talk bad about him and so reveal their true thoughts. And a sword will go through your own soul. What would you make of something like that? I mean, just imagine some random man comes into the church at the baptism and says all these things. What would you do? And yet, Mary managed all of this and more. Mary is the model of the God-centered person. You, we could even say that Mary is the God-centered person par excellence. She isn't called the mother of unfathomable sadness. She is not called Our Lady of Everlasting Depression. She is not Our Lady of the Incalculable Pain. She is the Holy Mother of God. St. Paul recounts many points, as you heard in the first reading, many points of Jesus' life, but you know, strangely, did you notice he never even mentions Mary? Not only that, in all of the letters of St. Paul, he never mentions Mary one single time by name. Mary was at the cross, as you know, but no mention of me is made of Jesus appearing to her after the resurrection. Have you ever noticed that? The last we see of Mary is with the apostles in the upper room at Pentecost. She is a most remarkable person, never calling attention to herself. Just imagine, Jesus is your son. You go to the PTA meeting. What is it going to be like? Yeah, this one has a son, that one has a daughter. My son is the son of God, top that one. <laughs> you know? I mean, just imagine. You know, I mean, I'm just thinking about this, you know. She's, she's at the, the laundromat, right? And everybody, or the hair, the hair salon, right? Where, you know, everyone is gossiping. And they're going this and that, and she's like, hmm. Yeah, but they ain't got a divine son. <laughs> no. She never did this. Come on, wouldn't you do that? Wouldn't you have at least a little pride, a little, hey, I must be something. She never did this. That's why I say she's a most remarkable person, never calling attention to herself, despite having the Son of God born to her. We shower her with praise, but she never asked for it. Now let's look for a moment then at your sorrow. Let's look at my sorrow. Is your sorrow unjust? Maybe. Is your sorrow so bad that it's inexplicable? Maybe. Is your pain, your inner pain, what you've gone through, what you've been forced to endure, is it unbearable? Perhaps. Yet, for myself, and perhaps for you, I ask this question. How can we look at Mary and then think of giving up? We may not be physical mothers of God, like Mary, but neither was St. Paul. And St. Paul said, I have been crucified with Christ, and I no longer live. But Christ lives in me. The life I now live in the body, I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. So with Mary, and so with us, as we journey towards a life of God centeredness. Let us stand to pray. With humble hearts, let us approach God's throne of grace with our needs and petitions. 
for all religious sisters and brothers. May God continue to bless them in their vocation. Let us pray to the Lord. For policymakers, may the Holy Spirit inspire in them a greater respect for all human life, especially the unborn. Let us pray to the Lord. For those who face the daily hardship of searching for food or shelter, may they be strengthened by the Lord standing by them. Let us pray to the Lord. For young people in this faith community, both physically present and virtual, returning for a new school year, may God bless them with a year of learning and growth. Let us pray to the Lord. For all who have died, especially Father M. R. Augustine, for whom this Mass is offered, may they enjoy a life in heaven in communion with the Trinity and all the saints. Let us pray to the Lord. Eternal Father, we ask that you look with favor upon these petitions. We ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Receive, O merciful God, to the praise of your name, the prayers and sacrificial offerings which we bring to you as we venerate the Blessed Virgin Mary whom you graciously gave to us as a most devoted mother when she stood by the cross of Jesus, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, and to praise, bless, and glorify your name in veneration of the blessed ever-Virgin Mary. For by the overshadowing of the Holy Spirit, she conceived your only begotten Son, and without losing the glory of virginity, brought forth into the world the eternal light Jesus Christ, our Lord. Through him the angels praise your majesty, dominions adore, and powers tremble before you. 
heaven and the virtues of heaven and a blessed seraphim worship together with exaltation. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in humble praise as we acclaim. indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is a chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and a chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis our Pope, Robert our Bishop, his assistant bishops, and all the clergy. Remember also of our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your faith. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever.
Let us pray now for the coming of God's kingdom as Jesus himself taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Communion hymn is number 899, I Sing a Maid, number 899.
Let us pray. Having received the sacrament of eternal redemption, we humbly ask, O Lord, that honoring how the Blessed Virgin Mary suffered with her Son, we may complete in ourselves for the Church's sake what is lacking in the sufferings of Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Mass is ended. Let us go in peace. Thanks be to God. And have a most blessed day. The closing hymn is number 551, At the Cross, Her Station Keeping. Number 551, five, five, verses 1 and 15.